Google's entire search operation got leaked. Intel is going to make NVIDIA's little CPU and AMD's next CPUs are incredibly fast. Rip your X3D chip. Yeah, yours, Kyler. Your 7800 X3D is dumb. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. And we're here in beautiful Taipei as we're getting ready to cover Computex, which should be starting next week. We have a few things that we're taking care of ahead of that before the actual conference gets started. But we're going to be doing a lot of remote coverage over the coming weeks about everything going on in the tech news world. So get ready for all of that. And Google should get ready because there's going to be a lot of questions with regards to search and their search algorithm because somebody got their hands on thousands of leaked pages about how the search API, SEO, and everything works with Google. And within those 2,500 pages of documents appears to be at least some details indicating that Google might not have been forthcoming with how all of the search actually works. And that according to the person who received it, that saying lied is harsh, but it's the only accurate word to use here. While I don't necessarily fault Google's public representative for protecting their proprietary information, I do take issue with their efforts to actively discredit people in the marketing, tech, and journalism worlds who have presented reproducible discoveries, essentially pointing out the fact that Google's search setup works very differently than what they communicate to people on the public ends, telling people not to focus on certain aspects of their site, but then using those aspects to calculate the rankings on where the pages will show up. This essentially amounts to if the KFC's secret recipe got leaked or we finally find out what the 23 different flavors in Dr. Pepper is, all of that now appears to be coming to light for Google, which when reached out to for a comment from the various different entities covering this, there was no response from Google, not even to deny the veracity of the documents that got leaked. So it's an intriguing thing to watch out for. And as people sort through the documents, I'm sure we'll find out more and more with regards to how much Google potentially was hiding from the public with how SEO and their search stuff works, which one of the things Cooler Master is trying to hide behind is just saying that their AI thermal paste was a translation error with the Cryofuse 5 that we talked about last week saying that it's not AI thermal paste, it's just the translation was to say it's for AI chips, which was one of the things that we speculated when we talked about this, but they put out a press statement over on Twitter saying that there's no such thing as AI thermal paste and that it got lost in translation. The reference to AI competitive on our Chinese website was an error and does not accurately represent the capabilities of Cryofuse 5. It's also a weird little apology where they're saying it was an error of translation, but it also was something that they did say. It is for AI chips. You, you can cool down AI chips with the Cryofuse 5, which is, which is good because it also works on non-AI chips in case you were wondering. And what's going to stop working unless something changes is TikTok in the US. But now we have an idea of when the court proceeding will take place. According to reports, it's going to be happening in September. So get ready for all the legal back and forth that's going to be happening between ByteDance and the US government with regards to whether or not TikTok has to sell in order to continue to operate here in the US. Except for I'm not in the US. I don't, I talked like I was, but I'm not. I, I left. It's pronounced it once. It's and just like I'm confused about where I am, I'm confused about whether or not there's deals today. We'll see if Reese gives you some UFD deals. Reese? Are you there? Ah. Thanks or thanks not, Reese. I don't know if there's deals, and I don't know if I'm ready for a world where NVIDIA's CPUs are being made by Intel. There's new rumors coming out that the ARM chips that are supposed to be going into the upcoming SOC from NVIDIA for desktop chips will be produced by Intel's three fabrication facility. So according to reports, the way that this chip is gonna break down is it's gonna have a Blackwell version of the integrated graphics, having LPDDR6 memory, and then have ARM core Cortex X5 processors. Now, part of this seems to indicate that maybe Nvidia might be getting their GPU still made at TSMC, but then is going to use Intel to package all of it together with that ARM processor. But it does appear to be looking like Intel's Foundry Services, which is going to be a key component of their business moving forward, has a major customer in Nvidia, which is something that they've been trying to find for quite some time. They want to have options outside of TSMC. They went to Samsung for 
the RTX 30 series, went back to TSMC for the 40 series, and now it looks like they might be tapping Intel to make some stuff. But what they are using TSMC for is the RTX 50 series. And now we have good leaked images of the upcoming 5090 Founders Edition, at least with regards to the cooler. And it looks like it's gonna be using that same weird setup that was on the 4090 Ti cooler that never ended up actually seeing the light of day. With the actual PCB being horizontal and perpendicular to the actual PCI Express slot. You can see that normally it would stand up like this, but it looks like the board is going to then pivot 90 degrees to go along the cooler. It's an intriguing little design, but it looks like it's gonna be necessary in order for NVIDIA to cool all of that power that they're gonna be packing into the 5090. And I, I'm excited. It's gonna be a weird little chip. I wanna see more of it. And we're getting to see more of Asus's upcoming RG Ally X that's supposed to be a debut here at Computex with some more details coming out about it. You can now see that visual representation of the black version of the ROG Ally. And there's also some confirmed specs, including the fact that it will have 24 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory coming in at 7467 mega transfers. And additionally, they have confirmed that it's going to have an 80 watt hour battery, which is a massive upgrade that will likely make this one of the longest battery handhelds out on the market, which is a, a good thing to see. I'm excited for it. It stacks up very well compared to a whole lot of others in the competition, but it will be heavier, about 70 grams heavier to accommodate for that rest of that battery. But it also looks like Lenovo is gonna try to update their handheld in order to compete with Asus on all of this with reports coming out of the Lenovo Legion Go Lite. And that is all we know is that they are making a smaller one, potentially seven inches to get down to the size, but there's no more details really than that. It might be Z1, it might be Z1 Extreme still. It's not quite clear, but more handhelds definitely coming out to the industry. And AMD is getting ready to launch more CPUs to the industry. But one of the weird things that we're gonna start encountering is that they are up to their old antics of copying Intel's naming so that you, the customer, confuse the branding and you just think that AMD is about the same as Intel and everything's good. This is something that they did when they launched their Ryzen chips, calling their motherboards the X370 and B350, which is when Intel was transitioning to be the 300 series for their motherboards as well, so that you thought that they were on par with each other, and that appears to be what AMD is doing with their next desktop motherboards. Instead of calling them X770, they're gonna call them X870 because Intel is expected to launch their 800 series chipsets as well. So now you don't think anything different of the two. You get Z890 from Intel, so they have a higher number, and then AMD has X870 and X and Z are close to, and they're 20 numbers off, so they're roughly the same, and it's just all about confusion. And in case you don't believe me, it's also coming out that one of the reasons that AMD is changing their name from Ryzen 9 whatever to Ryzen AI 9 is because they're also reformatting the numbering structure afterwards, where they're gonna call it Ryzen AI 300 instead of Intel's Core Ultra 200, which is supposed to be coming up in the Lunar Lake chips that's coming out. So AMD not only changing things on the desktop side so that the motherboards are numbered similarly with Intel, but they're also changing things on the laptop side so that they're a 100 number higher than Intel when it comes to their mobile chips so that you think that AMD is better. So we're looking for the Ryzen AI9 HX370 and the Ryzen AI9 365. Those are supposed to be coming out sometime soon with Strix Point, but they're doing that again to make it so that they stand out from Intel just a little bit. But that's one of the weird things is that that they're doing all of these numbering gimmicks trying to change how you are supposed to call these different chips but it doesn't look like we need that to happen because leaked benchmarks are coming out for the next generation AMD CPUs, which are supposed to launch sometime in late July, at least according to the latest rumors, which is nice. They're supposed to get shown off at Computex probably sometime next week, at least with the laptop side of things with Zen 5, who knows if we're gonna get to see desktop. But benchmarks for the Ryzen 9000 Zen 5 chips are looking mighty impressive. 5.8 gigahertz, 19% faster than the 7950X in single core speeds, and of course, 
according to the leakers, that the non-X3D version of these chips is going to take out Zen 4's X3D, no problem. So if you bought a 7800 X3D, get ready to be left in the dust, at least according to this. However, that still puts it slightly under Intel's 14900K when it comes to CPU-Z's single threaded score. But as we've talked about many times when it comes to these benchmarks, these synthetic benchmarks, that doesn't necessarily carry over into their gaming performance. The 7800X3D doesn't necessarily beat out Intel's chips when it comes to Cinebench and all these other synthetic scores, but it does still compete very mightily well against Intel, especially at the price point because of that 3D V cache. And according to reports, one of the things that AMD is changing with this upcoming Zen 5 is its Infinity Fabric bus, which should make the memory situation a lot more interesting on top of the higher clock speed, on top of everything else coming in at close to six gigahertz, we're looking to get what according to a lot of people is a big leap for AMD with Zen 5. Ryzen 9000 looks like it's gonna be a massive step up, which is good to see, especially since Intel is not expected to launch Arrow Lake until sometime later this year. And we don't even really know how that's gonna perform. They still have been kind of behind AMD when it comes to what we're expecting the next generation to be. So I'm excited for Zen 5. This is looking pretty gosh dang good. And uh, if we see and or hear anything while we're here at Computex, We'll uh, make sure to report on it. Actually, we did hear something. Do you remember this, Kyler? On our travels yesterday, we heard that AMD is hosting a little event for analysts with regards to their Zen 5 architecture sometime soon. For what lists? What did I say? Analysts? Hey, Brett, do you Brett, can you cut that? With regards to uh, weird comments by Kyler, let's look at the comments you left on Friday's episode of Hot News. We missed a couple days because of the travel here to Taiwan. But we got Jimmy Cav over on Floatplane saying, are we seriously not going to discuss Brett's delightful old man sweater? He's out here with the granddad Riz. Don't talk about his cardigan. I like my cardigan. I just recently got it and I was like, I should own more of these. You should have taken it would have been nice on the plane. It was very cold on the plane. Yeah, I was too. And I think I think the blankets that they gave me had some sort of animal dander on it. Like it did not get washed very well. I think you were smelling. It wasn't smell. No, I, I think you were getting the residual pesto hair. I sit next to you all day, every day. No, it was it was my neck pillow. I felt really bad because I was totally fine until I got off my neck pillow. And then after that, I heard the door beside me. Oh, she's. Oh. That was so bad. And it destroyed me, too. Oh, boy. Because that pillow sits on my bed all the time. Like, I just sleep in the back. And when I took it out on the plane under the lights, I saw hair go everywhere. <coughs> and I went, oh. oh. Anyways, yes, my old man sweater. I like it. Thank you very much for the compliment. I will continue to wear it, especially because where we film in the basement is very cold because the, the AC is working for the upper levels of my house. And so uh, it, it's, it gets very cold during the summer down when I'm filming and having a nice little jacket to keep you warm. It's nice. And then over on YouTube, we got Bacon Eater, great name, saying, is Spotify allergic to money too? I mean, they already earned their money off of the car thing. It's not like they're offering refunds. I, I, I although like I, I think we can look to the shutting down of a service recently that was done really well by Google when it comes to Stadia. Not only did they refund everybody for every game they purchased, they refund every hardware purchase as well. They didn't refund the monthly subscription because you theoretically used that while it was still live, but that's absolutely what Spotify should be doing here. If they're gonna sunset a product this soon after it came out, they need to be issuing financial refunds to everybody. And they're not allergic to money, which is why they're not doing it because they're gonna keep all that money. Then we got Travis saying, damn, Samsung is saying the quiet part out loud. You don't own the Samsung devices you purchase. Samsung still owns them after point of sale. Ew, what, you thought you got to have that? No, it says Samsung, it's, it's labeled on it. It says Samsung, so it's theirs. Why did you think you had your own phone? Then Brandon saying, where the f 
It's my yummy, yummy deal master. Aroused Lamp says, where is it? These are the questions. On Friday, Reese could not film because he was busy doing something. And then I forgot to mention that there was no deals. And so it just got completely cut out and you just had to deal with it. I don't know if there are deals today. There, there may or may not be. And then we got Bang saying, I could see the Cam 2 RAM being useful in a desktop PC for SFF builds. Other than that, I don't really see an exact purpose for it. Yeah, on desktop, it's a little weird because like you don't, need the the cooling space where the ram goes as far as that but in an sff build having just even extra horizontal space to put a cpu cooler that low could allow for uh better cooling capacity for cpus in really really tiny builds so that 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 is something cam 2 could do but uh i think it's just a showcase that msi has and it's not something that they're likely going to sell and then you lash saying where the rgb go in the trash where it belongs death to the overpriced rainbow puke besides bet you someone is going to look at the cam form factor and go i could stick an led screen on that i think that's a great idea i i want to i want a screen on my cam memory that's a great place for it that's smart i i i I see no problems here. And then Abdul saying, is there anyone who is not out to scam us anymore? No, and I'm here to scam you too. But I, I just scammed your brain out of time. You watched me. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to scam you. And uh, come back tomorrow for more scamming, potentially. I don't know if there will be more hot news, but see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>